Hi, Abacus users. Welcome to this tutorial, which is about convergence in Abacus. Let's start by convergence definition. A simple example of convergence is a convex lens which converges the light as it passes through it to a specified point. All the light beams come toward this point as they pass the lens. Convergence in finite element analysis is somehow similar. Convergence of a sequence means that its terms eventually comes close to a particular value, which is known as the limit of the sequence. In finite element analysis, convergence can imply multiple meanings, such as mesh convergence, time integration accuracy, convergence of nonlinear solution procedure and solution accuracy, in this video, we are going to focus on mesh convergence, which may be more familiar to you rather than others. Time to challenge your knowledge. The solution of FEA is highly dependent on mesh size and the type of elements. It is important that you use a sufficiently refined mesh to ensure that the results from your Abake simulation are acceptable. The numerical solution provided by your model will tend toward a unique value as you increase the mesh density. The mesh is said to be converged when further mesh refinement produces a negligible change in the solution. When you plot your result versus mesh density, if you reach a plateau same as here, you can say your results are converged. Now the question is, what are the different methods to obtain mesh convergence? In order to obtain mesh convergence, you can use the following methods which are explained through a simple example. The first method is called H method. This method increases the number of elements and hence decreases the element size while keeping the polynomial order of the interpolation function constant. The second method is called P method. This method increases the polynomial order of the interpolation function while keeping the number of elements constant. Now we are going to have a mesh convergence study to see these theories in real simulation. Our model is a connecting lug, as you can see here. Three points are indicated on this model, and the quantities to check in each point is determined in the parenthesis. The loads and boundary conditions are also indicated. The model is encased at one end and a uniform pressure load is applied at the bottom side of the hole. The important part of this case study will now be described. As an example of a mesh convergence study, the connecting lug is analyzed using four different mesh densities. The first mesh density, which is named as coarse, consists of 14 elements. The second mesh density, which is named as normal, consists of 112 elements. The third mesh density, which is named as fine, consists of 448 elements. And the fourth mesh density, which is named as very fine, consists of 1792 elements. All the mesh densities have the same element types, which is declared by C3D20R elements. So here we have used the method to obtain mesh convergence. The results of the four different mesh densities at the indicated points are shown in the table. These three points are chosen to consider the influence of the mesh density on three particular results from this model. The displacement of the bottom of the hole the peak Mises stress at the stress concentration on the bottom surface of the hole. And the peak Mises stress where the lug is attached to the parent structure. The coarse mesh predicts less accurate displacements at the bottom of hole, but the normal, fine, and very fine meshes all predict similar results. The normal meshes, therefore, 
converge as far as the displacements are concerned. Now let's take a look at the convergence plot of the results. All the results are normalized with respect to the values predicted by the coarse mesh. The peak stress on the bottom of the hole converges much more slowly than the displacements because stress and strain are calculated from the displacement gradients. Thus, a much finer mesh is required to predict accurate displacement gradients than is needed to calculate accurate displacements. Mesh refinement significantly changes the stress calculated at the attachment of the connecting lug. It continues to increase with continued mesh refinement. A stress singularity exists at the corner of the lug where it attaches to the parent structure. Theoretically, the stress is infinite at this location. Therefore, increasing the mesh density will not produce a converged stress value at this location. This singularity occurs because of the idealizations used in the finite element model. The connection between the lug and the parent structure has been modeled as a sharp corner, and the parent structure has been modeled as rigid. These idealizations lead to the stress singularity. According to this issue, now let's talk about mesh convergence rule exceptions. First exception is singular solutions. A stress singularity is a point of the mesh where the stress does not converge towards a specific value. As we keep refining the mesh, the stress at this point keeps increasing and increasing. Theoretically, the stress at the singularity is infinite. Typical situations where stress singularities occur are the appliance of a point load, sharp re-entrant corners, corners of bodies in contact and point restraints. As you can see, stress singularities are a common situation in FEA. The analyst must use his knowledge to determine the possible singularity locations and see if they are of importance for the model or not. Second exception is localization problems. Let the bar considered here be divided into infinite elements. Furthermore, a slight inhomogeneity of the stress, as would be encountered in every non-trivial two- or three-dimensional analysis, is assumed. Only the element with the highest stress level reaches the peak in its local stress strain diagram. This element will enter the post peak regime, causing the stress level to decrease, and the other in minus one's elements, since these elements have not yet reached the peak stress, to unload elastically. Thus, localization of deformation occurs. The localization width equals the element size L divided by N instead of being determined by the constitutive description. As a consequence of the localization in one element, the global load deflection, response which is obtained in the finite element analysis, severely depends on the number of elements employed. Upon mesh refinement, convergence to a meaningful solution does not occur. In fact, the global post-peak curve doubles back on the initial elastic path for an infinite number of elements, representing the case of a line crack of width zero and zero energy dissipation. This solution is unacceptable from a physical point of view. Now it is time to pack this tutorial with the final tips. As the final tips, we are going to answer some practical questions. The first question is how to control singularities in mesh convergence. The answer is it is common to omit small details like Philae radii from a finite element model to simplify the analysis and to keep the model size reasonable. However, the introduction of any sharp corner into a model will lead to a stress singularity at that location. 
This normally has a negligible effect on the overall response of the model, but the predicted stresses close to the singularity will be inaccurate. For example, in our connecting lug model, if the exact stress at the attachment point is required, the fillet between the components must be modeled accurately and the stiffness of the parent structure must also be considered. The second question is how to obtain mesh convergence for large complex models. For complex three-dimensional simulations, the available computer resources often dictate a practical limit on the mesh density that you can use. In this case, you must use the results from the analysis carefully. Coarse meshes are often adequate to predict trends and to compare how different concepts behave relative to each other. However, you should use the actual magnitudes of displacement and stress calculated with a coarse mesh with caution. Abacus provides an advanced feature called submodeling that allows you to obtain more detailed and accurate results in a region of interest in the structure. The solution from a coarse mesh of the entire structure is used to drive a detailed local analysis that uses a fine mesh in this region of interest. The third question is, should we refine the mesh in the entire model? It is rarely necessary to use a uniformly fine mesh throughout the structure being analyzed. You should use a fine mesh mainly in the areas of high stress gradients and use a coarser mesh in areas of low stress gradients or where the magnitude of the stresses is not of interest. You can often predict the locations of the highly stressed regions of a model, and hence, the regions where a fine mesh is required, using your knowledge of similar components or with hand calculations. Or you can use a Bacchus K to mesh the geometry coarsely for the initial simulation, and then refine the mesh in the appropriate regions, as indicated by the results from the coarse simulation. And you know, this is the end of this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed. Your comments are well accepted to improve our tutorials. Wish you the best.